chapter. Folks, thank you so much for being here. My name is Nick Callahan. I am the director of the Maine Outdoor Film Festival. This is our third ever panel. Give yourselves a hand. talk about their craft, to talk about their storytelling, and to share those ideas with other aspiring filmmakers and their fans. Um, so thank you for being here. Uh, because we show films outside, we have to do these before the screenings. Um, so it's a little irregular for maybe other film festivals you attended, but thanks for rolling with us. Um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce tonight's moderator. Uh, he's the owner of P3 Maine, a uh, video agency here in Portland. Uh, Let's give a warm welcome to Mr. Morgan Meyer. Thank you, thank you. Thank you guys, thank you for joining us. Um, you know, I was sort of remarking about why, you know, why we do this, you know, we, we're just so passionate about making movies. I've been making films and docs for a long time. And, you know, what Moff is doing with conservation and conversations you know I mean it's really 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 important what we're doing right now and being a part of this messaging especially with all that's going on with you know what's going on in the world you know we need to be a part of the conversation storytelling is really really important and so um, I'm really proud of these guys for putting it all out there I mean you know you you can make movies with 500 people or today you can do it with one and that's really, really unique that you can get your voice out there with, you know, technology has just allowed us to make stories um, and really in, impact people in a new way. So thank you guys for joining me on that. And thanks for doing what you do. If you haven't seen Joshua, so Joshua, Joshua Susi, correct? Okay, I got that right. Um, his film showed last night here, right? Um, great film, we'll show his clip. Um, can you just tell us just a little bit about just the movie in general um, and what you were you know trying to accomplish? I mean, just a quick summary of the movie. Yeah, really quickly. It's about yeah. a artist from Maine that uh, he works. He does like egg tempera paintings, so he takes rocks uh, from like the area that he paints, breaks them up, and paints the painting with that, like combined with egg yolk. So it uh, kind of like it, it, the, and then the film's about him making a painting. Uh, of a log cabin up like up north, so yeah. it's beautiful. It yeah. really is beautiful. Um, and Roger, your film Little Olympians, correct? Um, Update. Just tell us a little bit about that. Was two years ago. Sorry, we're showing this one is no. We're showing a different one from this year that nobody's seen yet. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Keep it going. Keep yeah. Right. Going. Right. Right. Uh, where were we? The, not the hummingbirds. Oh, the sap collectors. Yes. Called sap time. It's a great, uh, if the guys didn't have that accent, it wouldn't be as good of a film as I think it was. I think when I wrote to you about it, it says, it's, it's not a great film, but it's important because it's a document of a couple of brothers, you know, in their late 50s, early 60s, collecting sap. They own a, a dairy farm. They're, you know, salt of the earth. Uh, DIY figured out before DIY was popular and online and everything. Yeah. They're just, they're interesting characters, intelligent in their own way. They know how to get out of a jam. They know how to make money. They run a farm. Um, they're just it's awesome. worthwhile to take four minutes and show who they are. And so this clip is from a previous film, but all, but also you've been doing some of this. The, the close-up one? Yeah, the close-up one. Okay, that's from this year's film. That's the first thing I do called Chasing Maine for the Maine Monitor website. Hopefully it'll be shown next year, but it just was a, a, a specifically dramatic image that I thought... How'd you get that oh, shot? It's, oh, it's, it's dramatic. That, that's the story behind Yeah, it's fucking it is, great. It's great. Let's, let's show them.
Nice, nice. Yeah. Right. So, Joshua, I just had a question, you know, really about, more about your shot. Um, now, you, that, you picked that shot for a very particular reason, and you need to tell the audience <laughs> why you picked that shot. All right. Especially so, the top down, right? Yeah, the top down. I really do like the shots of, like, the end of the log. You know, you see the saw blade, like, slowly moving towards it. It's one of my favorite shots. But then I picked this one just because uh, it was pretty much most of the film was just me with a camera with the guy who was painting. So it was, you know, intimate and uh, simple. And um, th so obviously we're there at the sawmill getting shots of it and we're like, uh, trying to think of like, some, you know, angles and good w ways to make it look good and interesting. You know, you can only shoot the sawmill standing there so many times before it gets old. So it's like, well, what if we shot it from down on the top? And it's kind of big and gummy. There's a bit of a flat spot on the top. So we, I snuck up on top of it and <laughs> stood up there. <laughs> we had kind of a, you, a little bit of a longer lens. So. You really wanted that handheld look, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what I don't understand is why you didn't just, you know, get a get a ratchet strap and a tripod and strap the thing to the top. I mean, it's a relatively risky shot to pull off, right? It's dangerous. Yeah, I mean, there's... Well, he's on the top of this friggin' thing. <laughs> I kind of was, lean, you know, hunkered down, leaning, so it was, it was relatively safe, and he was pushing it, so... I mean, worst case, I would have just fallen off. I don't think the saw would have cut me, but... Oh, my God. <laughs> it's probably a little iffy. <laughs> a little iffy? <laughs> Workers' comp, you know, <laughs> right. safety standards here. No, I think um, it, it just brings up a really interesting point about like our, when we're in the field, when we're trying to get shots, we do have to be pretty quick, quick on our feet, come up with a shot, come up with something that is going to elicit something that's different from that other people have seen. And you have to be willing to be nimble and, and come up with a really unique solution. I mean. Ideally, you're obviously not doing this standing on top of the blade. You're, you know, you've, you've, like I said, ratcheted strapped a tripod down or you have a gorilla pod or something like that. Right. But when you're uh, in your 20s, you can take outsized risks, okay, and stand on top of the saw. There's time considerations. Yes, yeah, exactly. There's, yeah, the, <laughs> there is time considerations, you're right. Um, but tell me just a little bit about working with him too. Um, this this painter who this log is from the yep, the from cabin, right? So it's like becoming. It, it, you had to incorporate the log for as part of the piece of the story, correct? Yeah, yeah. Basically, I mean, I've known the the painter. I've known him for a while. We've been friends, you know, growing up and stuff. So he was he was you know starting a new painting, and so I was like, let's make a video of it, and we kind of collaborated. The, like I said before, every, everything to do with the painting is kind of like, it's all natural and from the location of, like, so the whole painting is kind of like the location itself. So it's like, in the video, he gets, gets rocks from the area, he breaks them up, he uses that for the colors in the painting, and then obviously in the end, it's gotta be framed, so he, he replaced a log from the cabin a while back, and. He had that, and he, we cut it up in the sawmill. That's great. Is he a friend yeah. of yours, or he is? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Um, Roger, let's talk a little bit about your shot, though. Um, I just, yeah. it is pretty yeah, stunning. Yeah. It is pretty stunning. This is, um, from a technological standpoint, you're obviously lo using an incredibly long I'm gonna lens, sneak right? See how short I haven't seen it this big. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Get into it. <laughs> Shit. It's in focus. Oh, man. It's in focus, which oh, is impressive. Oh man. Oh wow. Okay. That's a good I mean, all right, I will say, if you were to try to pull off this shot even 20 years ago, you would have to really scout this shot out, know what the bird flight is, understand your focus plane, probably have two, three, four guys working with you in the tech, and technologically helping you support this. Nowadays, you can do this with one camera because you have, I'm assuming this is autofocus, no, 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 Jesus, no. that's amazing. I, well, I went, I went through the gamut of all, of all I went through the gamut of all that. Um, I find because I wanted him flying in and leaving, but yeah. then the leaving with the autofocus, it's 
there's probably 10 feet to the background, so of course it's going to autofocus with nothing in it. It's going to focus on the background, and then when something flies in, it's got to find that. So you focus. wanted a fixed focal plane. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And, and I, so what? What? Uh, how long was this lens? Is this like a 200 millimeter lens or longer? Uh, yes, it is a 200. Or, or it might be a 180. I have an old Nikon 1 180 lens. It's like a 30 or 40 year old piece of glass. And are you relatively close to the subject, or? Are yeah, you... I'm in a window. I'm like this close. <laughs> There's a, this is the lawn, this is the laundry room right here, and I've got this post set up right there. Yeah. And there's the windows right here. Here's the dryer. Here's the washer. A little baby legs tripod right here. I put some pieces of stuff up so he can't quite see me. So I'm kind of shooting you know, like a, like a, a tank gunner or something like that, shooting out like that, just yep. waiting for them. Yeah. Kind of peek around to, to to come into the frame, and and I had to narrow this whole thing down. I first started it was. A tomato cage, but that was about, you know, they're about this round, you know, and it would fly. I couldn't guarantee where he'd land. And my depth of field is just one inch. He's, yeah, he, he's got to be, he's got to be sitting right on that thing right there. And, uh, I'd, and have it, to, I'd shoot it, go to, look at that claw. That's amazing. <laughs> I love seeing it big like that. But it's, no. a, but the camera system you're using is on, is a DSLR, smaller, a smaller yeah, system. Yeah, Sony mirrorless. Yeah. You know, it's a four thousand dollar camera. Yep. One of the lenses is a hundred fifty dollar lens. Yep. The other one's a twelve hundred dollar lens. That's not phenomenal. super expensive. That is phenomenal. I mean, again, technology has come so far, and the cost of the barrier of entry to get a shot like this has come well, down tell so the much. Tell the cameras you use at P three. I just found out from Jeshua. You use an Arri. That's a twenty thousand dollar camera. More than that. Which, Jeez, oh, geez. Geez. come on. <laughs> come <Yeah>. on. <laughs> $20,000. But no, that's I, with the, the cameras no, today, that's, that's, in, that's in 4K. It's, um, it's, 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 it's stunning. And it, is, it just goes to show you that like, if, you're, if you have the passion and the determination and the patience to actually yeah. get a shot. Well, I'll tell you one other thing that makes this a difficult shot. So I'm in the laundry room, okay? There, here, that's the window. The okay, I'm ready right for over it. There. <laughs> well, how do you pre-focus? You don't have a bird to pre-focus on. I used either a salt shaker or some funky old shot glass thing we had. Yep. I had to stick that on here, you know, run outside, out the cellar door, all the way around, daylight cellar, come around, put that on there, run all the way back, focus on that salt shaker right there. And, and oftentimes I would be ready to shoot, and I forgot the effing fault. It's still sitting right there. Yeah. Run back out, move the salt shaker, put it on the ground, run back in, and then, you know, wait for them to I think this is a good up. example of the uh, OCD try it, try nature again. and also the insanity that has to oh, go yeah. into, oh. like, getting a really good shot, right? And yep. you've got to be kind of nuts. No, I'm just kidding. But no, you do. You get, oh, I mean, I, I'm I nuts. I mean, every, you should. Everybody should. And, and to get the right shot, you really do have to put a lot of effort into figuring out all those technical lo logistics, but also the thing that you're trying to actually listen. What made you get into bird photography in the first place? Uh, I mean, let's see. The hummingbirds I was fascinated by. I, I was, the, the nest behind that bird, imagine there's a porch over where Andrew is like that. That's where the nest is. They land here to spec out whether it's safe to go under to feed the, the, the little birds in the nest. Yep. Okay, so I knew that. That's why I could put that post anywhere, and I knew they'd land on it. You know, so I just I had to bring them to me. Yep. And once I, once I did that, and I had the, the, the field of focus down, I was uh, I was basically good to go. It's awesome. Joshua, tell tell us a little bit just technologically. I mean, you did you rely on anybody to sort of help you out with the shot, other than your the artist that was helping you. Um, are you, you're a one-man band out there, right? Yeah, I mean, I probably I probably should have had more stuff, but it was basically mostly handheld. We used just a camera and an anamorphic lens, like a relatively cheap setup to main, you know, keep a, the same look throughout the whole film. There's a little bit of uh, stuff shot in Super 8 at the beginning of the film. Obviously, that doesn't pertain to this, but, but yeah, yeah, so relatively small setup. So the anamorphic, um, if you don't know about anamorphic. Um, it's a wider aspect ratio, so you see the black bars on the on the TV here. We're we're looking at a wider image than is sort of like a theatrical image. It does lend itself to just um, a different type of framing, you know. Yeah. Instead of whereas I think in your docu style approach, where you're photographing a bird, you know, you want sort of the full experience, the full 
uh, I guess this would be a 16 by 9 ratio. But in this case, Jeshua, you're using an anamorphic lens. What was the decision there? Was it just because you thought it was beautiful because it is a beautiful lens, or is it, you know, something a little bit deeper than that? Um, yeah, I think mostly that. Just, yeah. just uh, we we wanted to give it a certain look, and just having the we just had we just used the one lens, so keeping like a very similar focal length the whole time. So it's always kind like of if you're it. going wide, yep. yeah, you just walk way back, and uh, yeah, it gives it a certain you know specificity to it. Sure, I and agree then with that. Obviously, the anamorphic, you know, kind of like is warp warping the image in a way, which gives it a certain look. Definitely, it's different yeah. Than just a you know normal spherical. Lens. In the in the old days, you know, an anamorphic lens was squeezing the image yeah, into a a. Yeah. Thir a 35 millimeter film print, like yep. a, a square film print. And so when you de-squeezed it for this, when they would print the, the film, they would de-squeeze it and they would stretch out. Whatever was in the center was typically in focus, but anything in the sides was soft and vignetted and really beautiful. And there's, uh, there is some, this isn't a great example of right. the full strength of it because you'll, you know, like a wide shot where you have your subject up close, you can see the, how, in focus your subject matter is and it's really really a lovely way to photograph because it it just really grounds the image and it makes your subject pop yeah. um, I think it's it's just interesting though that like nobody and I'm gonna keep going back to the technology nobody would have shot anamorphic 15 years ago because it required a very special camera it required a very special lens. The lens typically was mounted in like 15, 20 pounds yep. with support systems. You needed multiple guys to help Operators. help you rig the thing up. So again, with the barrier of entry, you know, anamorphic has really helped us. Um, I mean, technology has really helped us get awesome shots for, I mean, what's your camera system? Is it a AS7? It was, that, that was just with a GH5 yeah. and then to, you know, micro four thirds to an anamorphic. So yeah. yeah, very small, very compact. It's really cool. But it's interesting that there's a lot of cheaper like anamorphic lenses for the micro four thirds system. Whereas you know normally if you want to do anything anamorphic, it's a lot of money or you're renting something. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, were you using Roger? Were you using a slow mo? Uh, maybe not in in particular for the. Were you were you photographing that in for slow motion? That, that, well? that project, I didn't do much slow mo because in the nest. What I did use was a faster shutter speed yes. than usual, instead yeah. of a 48th or a 50th, which is supposed to, to get motion blur. Yeah. It was like a 200th, because I thought I might want to freeze a frame or something like that, so I'd have a sharper image to it like that. And you're not lighting this at all, right? No. No. So that's I it. did cheat and fix the background. There was something kind of through there. To make it pop. Journalistic, you're not supposed to do that. Don't anybody tell. Yeah, um, but you're a creative. And yeah. I actually, actually, after that shot, I think I actually went and got a piece of old barn wood and stuck it up. That's interesting, actually, that you you bring that up because well, a piece it of white in there was yeah. It would, if you had a little, there was just some flex of stuff that bugged me. Yeah. And I said, I, I you know, well, take the f ten minutes, go get you know, go fix it because you're gonna want to get that Surreal. shot. I knew that was gonna be the opening shot because. You got five seconds to grab some in online videos. You got the five seconds. You know, you got to grab them right away yeah. and give them a reason to stay watching. Tell me and when you got this shot, Roger. Where you like, oh my god! Oh, yeah. yeah, you freaked well, out. It, it, yeah. it, the problem is, it raised the bar on everything yeah, after that. Good point. It's like, okay, you got to get all that stuff you shot there. Soft shit. So yeah. <laughs> out of here. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, but that's a good thing, yeah. and, it did, and it did force me to make sure that the things were sharper. I shot yeah. some more stuff in 4K. I got a little less lazy and yeah. worked at it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really amazing. I mean, the thing about manually focusing it and taking the time to understand where your focal plane is so that the stanchion that you can see the bird is standing on, it, if you preset that focal plane, you know, you know it. That is a much better way than relying on an autofocus technique, which is now, honestly what I right. know. There was no I way know, to make it happen. but there was no way to make it happen because what it will do is it won't. It'll be so. It's it's funny to see like where technology breaks down too, mm -hmm. because it does it does still have its limitations, and it's always looking for something to latch onto. So when it would first fly in it would be out of focus for quite some time. Yeah, and right, the fact right. that when it flies in and it's in focus right. is pretty stunning, and that's a really nice decision. Yeah, and I knew I wanted, that was the opening scene, I'm gonna have the chasing mane, 
the feeding frenzy title under there. Yeah. Um, they're nice fonts. They look good. They need to be blank. I didn't want to have anybody see the bird first. Say, what the heck is this about? And all of a sudden, boom, right. he shows up. Right. Which is kind of a, 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 the way that their existence, my wife will vouch for it. When, when they're doing this, these guys make, I guess, at least 1,200 trips total over 16 days. Sometime when they're just an egg to the time that they leave the nest. And I did get them leaving the nest. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was the hardest part of it all. Because yeah. you never knew when it was going to come, you know? And uh, it's just funny to think, like, you know, if you were doing this back in the day, you, you'd be like up in a tree stand, you know, eating energy bars for 30 days. Oh, just anybody that goes out like in the wilderness, I have the greatest respect for that or anything. I saw there was a National Geographic thing about uh, trying to get the Siberian tiger or something. They spent a year, a year, a year out there with remote and they got. I know. Nothing. I know, and they had all the technology at yeah, their disposal right, right, and they still right, weren't right. able to get it in the money. Um, in terms of. You know, failures. I mean, how often? How much? How how long did it take you to get this shot? I mean, were you trying so many a lot different of things? Pain in the ass trips. I would take it. I would have to take the SD card, run up to the computer, two flights. Yeah. Put it in. It looks sharp on your little monitor. Okay, that's what I got. But then you get it once you blow it up. That's why I'm sorry. I was just running up to that thing ahead and see if it still stands up to a bigger size. And uh, once I saw it, I was just flabbergasted. Yeah. Literally, right. because it, that's the image I had my, didn't I tell you, Sue? The image I need is full frame with a dragonfly right there. But also exposed. <laughs> also well exposed. Yeah. Uh, Which yeah, is, I don't know how I managed to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good, though. I mean, the piece of contrast, that is a really nice artful touch, Can though, behind it. Can you just hit, it. The, hit it in video? Just, I want to see it one last time, but that's the last time I'll see it big. Just keep playing it. <laughs> but, uh, but, but it's all about... In fact, no, keep it on the loop. I don't. I don't. Anthrop anth anthropomorphism is where you attribute, <laughs> you give human characters to, uh, to, to animals and things like that. But so it's always been a question of mine, because when I was shooting from a hide, and they knew I was there. I knew they were there. I'm underneath the porch. I got a little hide around yeah. the camp, you know, that same big London tripod on, on the, the nest. And they're very hinky about me being there. Yeah. But they got used to it. We just there was a there was a synergy going on there. That I would hear him beep, 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 you know, hitting that post. Oh, there it is. And that thing's still <laughs> kicking. I mean that I mean that and here the, the only bummer is I love dragonflies. Dune, they did, they, the movie Dune, they, oh, they made their so ornithopters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they, they, the dragonflies, they, 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 they fly in grids and everything like that. They're but awesome. They, just, they would just wipe out whatever dragonflies they had. It's really awesome. <laughs> it's really awesome. In, ter in terms of, though, a failure, Je Joshua, have you had, like, did you have one that was on? Because we all have, I think, you know, people want to learn well, hopefully you guys want to learn a thing or two from, from this, but I mean, there's so many failures that happen when you're trying to get a shot and then something actually does magically does happen, like the light sets at the right moment or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Did anything happen on this set or did you learn something from something previously that you could, you could attribute to this project? It doesn't even have to be the shot. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I mean, there's, there's always like, I think, just in in amongst all the shots you know what i mean you take take a lot of stuff you have a vision for it but then like he says you get it back to your computer and you're like uh oh, some of these yeah. Yeah. not so much yeah. you know there's always like a a process of going through it and you know having to be like harsh with it and like hey what are the best what's the best and how can i put it together in a way yeah. that's you know engaging and interesting and you know. Are you doing all your own audio at the same time? Yeah, my brother does the audio and music stuff. Yeah, that's another thing that's just so funny. Like, you're capturing audio at the same time, too. I mean, a, a job that was dedica typically yeah, right. associated with a, a dedicated human being that was there getting the audio. Now we can do that in a really, really tasteful and, and technologically a very... Uh, Honestly, audio is probably one of the most important things to get. It's way underrated. Uh, it's, yeah, you know? it's, I mean, yeah. It gets so, so little credit for, and that's the, 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 there's an ambiance to it that it brings a scene alive. It goes from being a music video to a, 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 a scene that's yeah. real. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, what's next for you, Joshua? Are you working on anything in particular? Yeah, I've been working on, you know, pro just projects for other people. As far as me next, um, yeah, I'm kind of like 
looking for, I'd like to work on another documentary of sorts, I think. And so I'm kind of, you know, looking for the next idea, you know, maybe another artist. I've, I've toyed around with the idea of uh, making like a, something longer, try for like a, you know, feature length of like uh, egg tempera painting itself and like focusing on everything to do with that. So I don't know. I'm kind of up in the air looking for stuff. Finding right a subject that you want to really like sink your teeth into yeah, and stick with because it's, 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 I mean, it is, pa it is like a passion project to get involved with mm -hmm. this, obviously. And to really say, geez, I could see that being something more impactful. I mean, a feature doc yeah. really takes a lot of, uh, really th thought and right. thinking about who your subject matter is actually going to be. So I'm interested right. to see what you do next. Yeah, and making something that's going to be like actually enjoyable to yeah. watch. Like I, I hope that with this, it's like 15 minutes and it's enjoyable and engaging yeah. to the whole thing. But it's like, okay, now how do you do that for a much longer length of time? Absolutely. Well, I mean, you, and he also um, worked with your brother, right, on, yeah. on the music, which is really stunning. The music, and you can feel the cohesion. I think seeing the fact that you worked with or you knew the guy that, that you knew the artist yeah then you worked with your brother <laughs> right but there's something beautiful about that because you're all kind of in sapatico and you're understand and the, and the film sort of lends itself to you know a deeper understanding and it's it's soft and it's got some really nice tonality to it and that comes from probably knowing like your yeah. brother's disposition and how he works with you and vice versa. It's a pretty impressive... Do you think you'd work again with him on... on oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if possible. That's cool. <laughs> it Ooh. also came from a lot of, like, being harsh with the film and, like, okay, where does it fall short? You know what I mean? Right. How can we make it better? Yeah. You know, not being like, ah, that's good. It's yeah. good, looking good. I think, you know, that, that that was my other big question for both of you, really, is, you know, I, you know, as I've just sort of progressed in my career working with big crews of people um you know but it's always interesting to see like what you can do with 30 or 40 people on a on a film set or, or television right. uh, commercial set but also what's interesting on the flip side is like a singular vision mm -hmm. and with and like we're saying talking about with the tech the barrier of technology being so low that what you can actually accomplish do you have in you know envision do you envision working with larger crews is that something that you want to do or are you guys are you you know lone wolves and you really appreciate that sort of style I'll go first <laughs> I, I was gonna say I mean I can see myself working with a larger crew I don't know the, like the thought of like being the, the you know the director and like managing 30 people to to make a vision come around that scares me right now you know maybe someday but like for now it's like and working with enough people to I think just get what needs to happen done but to keep it easier with like you know if you have like a five person crew or even you know with this project it's very small it's easier to keep everybody focused and really hone in on you know what needs to be done or like what sure. the vision is sure. for the project it's it, it is funny though like filmmaking is inherently collaborative a collaborative um whereas like painting is a very singular and yeah. and 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 you're in solitude and making that piece of art um, and it's just you know where do you sit in the I mean well who did you rely on for some of these shots I mean are who did you collaborate with was it just it was the mostly the artist yeah, yeah so we kind of like would talk back and forth about you know we were with the well with each step but like the first section of the video is like we're at a we're at a log cabin up north that's just like was made a long time ago and we basically, you know, he was going to be there for the whole week painting, so, and there's no power. So, so I brought up all my equipment, and we were just like, okay, now would be a good time. You know, we picked yeah. out different times of day that would look good. And He's playing the director almost as well. I yeah, mean, in, in some like way, a, a creative director. There, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> How about yourself, Roger? Did you, like, work with anybody that was sort of giving you, it sounds like your wife had some input on some things? <laughs> yeah, sometimes, yeah. No, it's, uh, I'm very much a lone wolf approach. It's, the tech allows me to do that. Yeah. Um, shotgun mic here, lavaliers mic, so yep. you get that, you have a pair of headphones. I've run five cameras on a job, two GoPros, a drone, yep. and the two Sonys, you know, sometimes for stills. Yep. It's just, uh, it's a work, I, I don't want to have to yell at anybody. Uh, 
No, you like controlling it. I do. I, and it's, I, I mean, I, I like doing what, I, to what yeah. I see it. I wanted to explain it to anybody yeah. at the time. Totally. And I just go and do it. If it's wrong, it's wrong. But, if it's, but I'm usually right. Yeah. What's my my daughter saying, I'm not bossy, I just have better ideas. You know? There it is. And I don't have the time to explain it. There's the truth. Well, I'm kind of on a, uh, it's ENG, a running gun, electronic news gathering. It's, yeah. I'm figuring it out on the fly. Okay, a commercial shoot, all those things, you've got a script, you got all this, kind of, and that's cool, that's fine, but I much prefer to just be thrown in. I just, the last two things I did were weddings for relatives, as, as you know, wedding gift. I don't want to just sit around and be a wedding guest. And they, they came out terrific. I had a great time. I did them the way I want to. I, I want to do them, and that's just. Uh, I just think it, it's more productive and more creative, ultimately. Well, there's all you know. Thank God the, for tech, though. Thank God for tech. True. I, mean, I just I, I marvel mean, at it. Yeah, and it's just changing. You know, obviously every every day. Um, and that hierarchy, you know, is. I mean, there's this very traditional hierarchy of mm -hmm. how crews work and how, how people work within systems um, and there's a, lots of benefits on one side because What's everybody's... What's your worst story? I mean, you're the guy that has the expertise. We don't about working well, with a crew. Come on! Just working with... Uh, Come um, on! Where, you know, I mean, it went south. Something. Come on. I was on whenever a, I watch him, and he'll we'll both attest saying, there's many times you watch the thing and say, how the hell do they manage to organize all that on time, get it to happen, and get yeah. a shot as the light is, they didn't lose their light or anything like that, you know, on a larger yeah. scale. Come on, you must have a good story. I mean, I, I've only, I only have set stories from being on lots where people are just assholes to one another. I mean, and, and that... That's one nice thing about being on that, your Exactly, that. And, and with the crew environment, you know, and, and you have, you know, these cliques and these, like, power struggles between one another, you know, that's... A real thing. It's a it's mm -hmm. a it's a real thing. The Teamsters don't like the the Carpenters and X Y and Z. And you know I've seen people getting fist fights over you know a plate okay. of somebody smoking a cigarette in front of their lunch. Um, so that is actually the worst. I mean we try to thread. We're kind of threading the needle where mm -hmm. we're still cobbling together crews that where you can have a DP, a director of photography, a director, a you know. AC and a, a, a assistant camera, second AC, and so on and so on, and and you're cobbling together these teams, but we're all still just trying to figure it out collectively. You know, we're, we really aren't. There's we've stripped that we've well, I would like to say that we've stripped the ego away because, in that way, it, it, it is cumbersome. I mean, you can get if you have the really brilliant human being like a Stanley Kubrick, Kubrick, you want that person, you know fighting for his ideas and that because he's just so brilliant mm -hmm. but most 99.9% .9 of people just are not in that mind space and so you know having some ownership you know of your of your of your work and being able to be a one man band i mean i it's really a beautiful thing honestly and it's it the fact that we can be again sharing these stories in a more collaborative environment i just think is a it's so I just look at what we can see on Netflix and on I, think I, I I'm almost, I'm almost overwhelmed by like the decisions right. you can make and the internet uh, allows anybody to publish exactly exactly yeah. and that's a that's I, a, a, a great democratic side of Bingo. the of the, of the system um, I don't know does anybody have any questions uh, about anything anybody any I was any, gonna ask yeah. you uh, how long did it take you did you just like hit record on your camera and leave it sitting there yeah or good you question uh, sometimes it's in 4k so I didn't want to build up I, I, I could see you know 40 gigs I'm like shit that means I gotta go back through find those moments you know when yeah. I'm shooting at the nest like that um, I wish Sony would did the better cameras my older Sony has called an end trigger function which is cool you push the button and it, it's caching all the time but it records eight seconds of that before it so you could just wait for thing to happen and go 1,000, oh, I got one, that. 1,002, you know, and hit it and yeah. it's like, oh my God, you don't have to just let it roll and, you know, you don't know, because yeah. sometimes these damn birds were taking half hour off or whatever, they ran in cycles, you didn't know. <laughs> sitting right. a, oh, yeah, well, there was one, it was a funny one, I put it online, I'm trying to set, I wanted them, there's another place you used to land on, and they'd land, I said, I gotta, I gotta put my salt shaker up there, you know, and I walked back, and it came by the time back, dude, he's up there like this, strutting around next to the guy, he said, oh, no, I, I'm not focused yet, you know, what yeah, are you doing? Yeah, yeah. And, and that was that anthropomorphism again, I think it was, 
because the clip I got, he was preening. And I, I swear you just like the attention. That's cool. That's cool. Just saying. But I mean, that is pretty amazing that you can run a card, you can run, I, mean, I don't know, what, I 32 know. gig card on 4K and... I mean, call the good stuff. Twenty thousand dollars worth of film. Start, you know, yeah, you, you, oh, know, you can do it now. Exactly. It's, it's just amazing. Yeah. And I, I didn't know that pre-caching you could do that on that. Yeah, it's called end trigger function. That's you really neat. Old Sony yeah. 700. That's really neat. That's how they do a lot of slow-mo filming. Oh, is that the I same know, idea? I guess so. so. Yeah, like you, the phantoms or something. Yeah, like you know, like yeah. the, when you have so much information coming into the camera, if it's a really high-speed camera. Which some of your other work has been high speed, right? Mm -hmm. You've shot 250 it. Two hundred and fifty frames a second, yeah. twenty times. Um, the camera's eating, is gobbling up information so fast it's that super. you have to pick, you know, because that clip, if you were to play it out for you, that clip is now thirty yeah. minutes long, right? right? right, right, uh, right. So the camera needs to understand. Oh, I only want that two or three. Well, seconds. I did that at the wedding for the dancing thing. One of them was very Nick's wedding. It was very crowded. I was like, usually there's some space I can move. I can get something. Mm. I wanted a kind of slow-mo, but then I realized that it was just really crowded, and I was getting glimpses. And if, after, I've been doing this for so long, I'm kind of like, you know how cyborgs, they show those little, me, 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 they show the screen. I see life like yes. that. You yes, know? I see, right you see moment, life. I see them right here, like, this angle, that lighting, that person dancing, you know, yeah. it's, it's like unavoidable. Yeah, and, uh, I know what you mean. But, so if I got one second of that, I have five times slow amount, now I've got five seconds, or you know, slightly slow. It's just enough that it's meaningful on the screen. Yes. And you go, so yeah. Yeah. it just, again, it's the tech. I, the tech blows me away. Yeah, I know. So I'm mad that I didn't have this stuff a long time ago. I know, I know. I used to develop black and white film in a print, print split. And these were I know. <laughs> Don't get into it. Don't get into it. That's a whole other Is anybody? <laughs> oh yeah, dark room. Oh yeah, I, I had yeah. dark rooms and cellars for sure. Well, thank you guys. And no, thank you fine. so much. Does anybody have any questions? Or? I don't even know what time it is. I think that was about. Yeah, it's perfect. Great. Thank you for ever, everybody for joining us. Thank you.